Well, my name is Ponga Liwewe. I've been in football a long time. You know, I started on radio, analyzing with my dad, who was commentator. That was my first official involvement, but I was a fan from a little kid. And I've grown up in the game to the stage now. My, my main occupation is sports marketing, so we bring business and sport, particularly football, together. You know, business looks for exposure, publicity, sport looks for money. So we bring the two together. That's in a nutshell is what I do. I also do a lot of writing because one time I was deputy editor of African Soccer Magazine based in London. So in the last year or so, my passion for writing has reignited and I've been working on a series now with CEC on the 50th anniversary of Power Dynamos, which happens to be the team I support as well. I started to support Power Dynamos later on when I was uh, at university in Kitwe. I was fortunate to go to Kitwe again. Watched them a lot, never missed a game. I was also happy to witness some great occasions, becoming African champions 1990. I was also there in 82, the first time they lost to, to Arab contractors in Independence Stadium. I watched that game. I watched them win the cup. You know, I've seen some of the high moments of Power Dynamo. So it's, it's really something that is very close to me. So Dennis Luewe, my dad, was... Uh, and you see the word dad, that's what, uh, that's what is the applicable word. It's not so much the football in our relationship, but the fact that he was, he was my dad with uh, a lot of guidance, a lot of direction, you know, where to be, how to behave, what to do, demanding good results in school. Those are the things he focused on. But we went to football together, you know. For me, it was a great opportunity because, uh, you know, all my generation loved football, but he had that access which gave me opportunities to meet great players and then it grew on to, to, I, I remember the first game I analyzed I would sit with him in the commentary box he would be doing his commentary and I'm watching the game from there because it's the best view you can have in the stadium so one day some guy is unavailable to to do the analysis of the game and he says okay you'll do the analysis you know I wasn't expecting it you can't must build himself today or save out. This is his last hope in hell. It is today or never for Chitaru. But because I'd watched football so many times, I watched the matches, I watched World Cups on TV, I know the tactics, I read about formations, I read about the thinking of the coaches. You know, I was able to instantly jump in there. The mic was put in my face and I spoke, you know. And uh, I did a couple of times and people said, ah, okay, this guy seems to know what he's doing. Maybe we should give him more opportunity. And that's how I got into, into football media and the media space. And there on, it moved from uh, on radio to television, from television. I worked for about five years in London writing. So on a coaching front, people like Freddie Mwila, you know, he played, in, uh, he played for Aston Villa in England. When he came back, he had the opportunities to do coaching courses under Arthur Davis, given a lot of exposure, which was why he was able to stand out among... Uh, the top coaches in the country. Of course, in Kana had Moses Simwala, Mufira Wanderers had Zoom. But Freddie Mwila was up there among the best and, uh, and a man who demanded nothing else than uh, excellence from his players. My name is uh, Freddie Mwila. Uh, I joined the Power Dynamos in 1979. I came from Botswana where I was uh, working. I was invited by Mr. Davis, Arthur Davis, to come and take over uh, Power Dynamos. That's way back 79. Also a coach who demands his best. And when you watch his teams, they're aggressive. He doesn't tolerate indiscipline. He demands that the players uh, give 100%. Well, some people may say I'm tough talking. Yeah, I'm tough talking because I'm honest with the players. I tell the players what it is. If they are doing well, I uh, appease them. If they are doing badly, I will tell them what they are doing badly. That's the kind of uh, coach I, I've always been. If that will help uh, current uh, players. And that's why he was able to transcend from uh, club level to, to work with the national team. Involved uh, in the Olympics team, in the build-up to the Olympics, although he didn't go to the Olympics, but in the President's Cup, where the, the foundation of the team was laid. Uh, involved in rebuilding the national team after the air crash. So he's been always uh, part and parcel. And then, of course, later on, Wetson Nyerenda came to play for Power Dynamos. 
as a number nine, scored in the in the uh, African Cup Winners Cup final, the third goal in that uh, three one win against BCC Lions. The whole setup was uh, composed by Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis allowed us to <coughs> bring in good players. And those players uh, managed to train, and the team picked up uh, quite well. The combination of uh, youngsters that played in the reserve and the first team also encouraged uh, uh, the team to be uh, what it was. I mean, they were the fans also made a great impact uh, for Power Dynamos. The country was was keen to see this baby born with teeth. Uh, they, they named it baby born with a teeth. So it made it interesting because we played bigger teams like Wanderers, Buffaloes, uh, Dollar United in those days. We, we wiped them all, we beat them. And uh, players were very popular. And the fans were, <coughs> were feeling in the, the football ground uh, in whatever game we had. Without the backing of CEC, it would be extremely difficult for Power Dynamos. Incidentally, the one club among the top clubs who has never been relegated. All their big rivals, Muflira Wanderers, Nkana, Nchanga, etc., have, have gone down to the lower ranks. Power Dynamos, once they came up to the top league, have stayed up there. So this wouldn't have happened without the full support, the full backing of, uh, of CEC. But what should be understood is that it's not only about the money. It's about the commitment from the, on the field. It's about the right decisions uh, regarding staffing, coaching, uh, other technical staff, um, the model that you think will work for you. And if you look at a good example is the way Liverpool became champions. There's your Manchester City with endless resources in terms of pockets. Chelsea with resources that Liverpool could only dream about. But Liverpool, you know, it's a, it's a people's team. They have the structures, they have the organization, and not the deep pockets, but the results were delivered. So in my mind, the power dynamos of the future, I see it rebuilding where it once stood by adopting almost the Liverpool model, where resources can take you so far, but it's other structures, your youth structures, for example. Power dynamos are 10 and 50. Uh, they've done very well. Uh, let them do another 50 and bring success to the club. I would encourage that management behind Power Dynamos, encourage the boys to bring in firm, to work hard and bring firm again to the club. I would say that. And good luck to them.